Assalamualaikum. I am Arish Masoom uh, from the Department BS Biotechnology with Roll Number Zero One Seven, and today I'm going to discuss a topic which is NMR spectroscopy. Um, introduction and principles. First of all, I would like to tell you about the history of NMR. There are so many scientists who uh, contributed in the working of NMR, and so many are given Nobel prizes for their workings. So here we'll discuss few of them. Uh, credit for the discovery of NMR goes to Isidore Isai Krabi, who received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1944. After that, in the late 1940s and early 1950s, the Purcell Group at Harvard University and the Bloch Group at Stephen University independently developed NMR spectroscopy. Edward Mills Purcell and Felix Bloch shared the 1952 Nobel Prize in Physics for their discoveries. So, uh, basically, NMR is an abbreviation for nuclear magnetic resonance. An NMR instrument allows the molecular structure of a material to be analyzed by observing and measuring the interaction of nuclear spins when placed in a powerful magnetic field. So, um, NMR spectroscopy uses radio frequency radiation to induce transition between different nuclear spins states of samples in a magnetic field. NMR spectroscopy can be used for quantitative measurements, but it is most useful for determining the structure of molecules. So nuclear magnetic resonance is a spectroscopic technique that detects the energy absorbed by changes in the nuclear spin state. And the application of NMR spectroscopy is the study of proteins and nucleic acids uh, has provided unique information on the dynamic and chemical kinetics of these systems. Now, uh, there are so many questions that may arise in our mind that um, and that why is NMR useful and uh, what are the types of NMR and so many other questions as which element is used in NMR spectroscopy and so many other questions. So, um, which element is used in NMR spectroscopy? It's uh, deuterium. It's an isotope of hydrogen which has a neutron in the nucleus and does not have a spin unless hydrogen one. So the most common solvent used in NMR spectroscopy is deuterated chloroform. Now moving on to the next are the features uh, of NMR. So NMR spectra are uh, unique, well resolved, analytically traceable and uh, highly predictable for small molecules. Different functional groups are obviously distinguishable and identical functional groups with differing neighboring substituents still give distinguishable uh, signals. So it provides information at the atomic level um, on the dynamic of proteins and nucleic acids over an exceptionally wide range of um, scales ranging from seconds to picoseconds. So next are the limitations of NMR. So um, there are two major limitations of NMR. Uh, number one is it is limited to the measurement of nuclei with magnetic moments and then number two it may be less sensitive than other spectroscopic and uh, chromatographic methods of analysis. As we have seen, uh, although most elements have at least one nucleus that responds in NMR, that nucleus is often of low uh, natural abundance and may have a small magne magnetogryc ratio, reducing sensitivity. The proton, uh, hydrogen 1 and fullerene 19 are the two most sensitive elements. So elements in the ionic state doesn't respond in NMR, but the presence of ions in a sample contributes to unacceptable line uh, broadening. Paramagnetic contaminants such as iron and dissolved oxygen also broaden NMR lines. So nuclei with quadruple moments such as uh, barium 81 broaden the NMR signal line broadening in uh, general reduces the NMR signal and hence the sensitivity. So um, moving on to the next is classical description of NMR spectroscopy and the transition energy is nuclear dipole magnetic field interaction. So classical description of NMR spectroscopy that the spin and the magnetic properties but uh, nuclear consists of elementary principles particles called neutrons and uh, protons which contain an intrinsic property called spin. So basic phenomena of nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy is similar to other forms of spectroscopy such as visible spectroscopy. So a proton of light causes a transition from the ground state to the excited state. So atomic nuclei with even numbers of protons and ne neutrons have zero spin and all the other atoms with odd numbers have a non-zero spin. So magnetic movement of the nucleus forces the nucleus to behave as a tiny bar magnet in the absence of an electron 
external magnetic field each magnet is randomly oriented during the nmr experiment the sample is placed in external magnetic field p0 which forces the bar magnets to align with low energy or against the high energy the p0 so the during the nmr experiment a spin flip of the magnets occurs uh, requiring an exact quantum of energy to transition is in nuclear dipole magnetic field interaction so when the orientation of a collection of nuclear spins is observed in the absence of magnetic field all possible orientations of the magnetic dipole are possible so other spins placed in magnetic field the direction of z axis becomes defined by the direction of the field and the magnetic moment of spin nuclear two orientation either along opposite the magnetic field so during the nmr experiment a uh, Spin flip of the magnet occurs, requiring an exact quantum of energy. And to understand this abstract concept, it is useful to consider the NMR experiment using the nuclear energy levels. So, an exact quantum of energy must be used to induce the spin or transition. So, for any m, there are two m plus one energy levels. For a spin one by two nucleus, there are only two energy levels, and the low energy level occupied by the spins which align with b0 and the high energy level occupied by spin aligned with against b0 so schematic uh, shows that how the energy levels are arranged for a spin one by two nucleus and uh, how the strength of magnetic field plays a large role in the energy level difference um, in the absence of an applied field the nuclear energy levels are degenerate so the sp Split, splitting of the degenerate energy level due to the presence of magnetic field is known as Zeeman splitting, as we know this term. So, um, chemical shielding that the magnetic strength at the nucleus slightly differs slightly from the applied field, we know because of the shielded by the electron uh, density surrounding the nucleus. So, the shielding is due to the pre session of electrons under the influence of the applied magnetic field. Uh, so, before discussing principles, um, I would like to tell that um, NMR is is used to study wide range of uh, elements like hydrogen and uh, carbon. These are the two important ones. Uh, two common types of spectroscopy are used to characterize the organic structure. Hydrogen one NMR is used to determine a type of a number of types of hydrogen atoms in a molecule, and carbon thirteen is used to determine the type of carbon atoms in a molecule. Now. Uh, at the last, we are going to discuss the principles of NMR. So, um, what are the principles of NMR? The alignment of the magnetic nuclear spin in an applied constant magnetic field P0. So, there are, the principle behind uh, NMR is that Many nuclei have spin, and all nuclei are electrically charged. If an external magnetic field is applied, an energy transfer is possible between the base energy to a higher energy level, generally a simple energy gap. So, um, all nuclei are electrically charged and may have spin. Um, next is transfer of energy is possible from base energy to higher energy levels when an external magnetic field is applied. And the next one is the transfer of energy occurs at a wavelength that coincides with the ratio radio frequency and the next one uh, energy is emitted at the same frequency when the spin comes back to its uh, base level therefore by measuring the signal which matches this transfer the processing of the number spectrum for the concerned nucleus is yield so basically the principle behind nmr is a nuclear spin which are electrically charged so detection and analysis of the electromagnetic waves emitted by the nuclei of the sample as a result of this perturbation this is done so this is all from my side introduction and principles now uh, my next partners will tell about the other uh, parts of nmr spectroscopy thank you